The largest organism on Earth is not the blue whale, but a single fungus found in a forest in Oregon. This specimen of the honey mushroom is thought to occupy over 1,600 football fields worth of soil and weigh over 100 tons. It's thought to be at least 2,400 years old, and its mycelium, that thread-like network that grows underground, glows in the dark. Oh, it's also supposed to be delicious. Have you ever wondered how we figured out which mushrooms were safe to eat and which weren't? Well, we have the ancient Greeks and Romans to thank for that. When they found a new mushroom and they wanted to know if it was safe, they involved food tasters. That's a fun job. There are over a thousand edible mushroom varieties in the world, but only about 20 are commercially cultivated. The most common mushrooms at the supermarket are all the same species, Agaricus bisporus. This includes white, also known as button mushrooms, cremini, and portobello mushrooms. Cremini are a darker variety of white mushrooms, and portobello are just mature cremini mushrooms. Other common varieties that you see are shiitake, oyster, king trumpet, chanterelles, maitake, which are also known as hen of the woods, and morels. But there are so many more. Porcini, enoki, black trumpet, bluefoot, yellowfoot, beech, lion's mane, and wood ear. And the list goes on and on. And each variety has its own unique texture and flavor, which is what makes cooking with mushrooms so enjoyable. To me, mushrooms are fascinating largely because of what they're not. They're not plants and they're not animals. They're in their own kingdom entirely. And this actually has some big implications for how we cook with mushrooms. So check out this little experiment. I placed a steamer basket in a large pot of simmering water. And in that steamer basket, I placed a small piece of beef tenderloin, a chunk of zucchini, and a piece of portobello mushroom cap. And I steamed them for 45 minutes. At five minute intervals, I pulled each sample out and measured their firmness with my texture analyzer. You remember that nerdy fellow from the burger video, right? The data makes a pretty cool looking chart, but honestly, the better visual is looking at everything side by side after 45 minutes. A piece of beef tenderloin is so dry and tough and overcooked that frankly, it's a little painful to look at. At the other end of the spectrum, the zucchini has turned to complete mush. But now take a look at this portobello mushroom cap. Now granted, it's steamed for 45 minutes, so it's not the prettiest mushroom you've ever seen. But the real key here is that it has neither turned to leather nor turned to mush. In fact, it's pretty tender and nice. Oh, and don't worry about that leathery piece of beef tenderloin going to waste. We have lots of dogs in the office, and I fed it to this one. Her name is Buca, as in Bucatini, the pasta. How is it possible that a mushroom can cook for that long and still be good to eat? Well, the key to a mushroom's resiliency lies in its cell walls, which are made up of a substance called chitin. It's a polymer composed of a nitrogen-containing sugar called N-acetylglucosamine. And the key bit is that it's really heat-stable. Interestingly, chitin also is found in the shells of crustaceans, where it mingles with calcium carbonate and a lot of protein to make them particularly tough. We know that the proteins in beef are really heat-sensitive. That's why we use a super-fast digital thermometer to make sure we nail the exact right temperature for medium-rare, maximizing tender and juiciness. And plant cell walls are glued together with pectin, which is equally heat sensitive, allowing our zucchini to go from really crisp to tender to mush in just minutes. But in a mushroom, heat sensitive chitin cells form an interconnected structure like this. And that is why it's actually pretty hard to overcook a mushroom. They're pretty bulletproof, but they do present a unique challenge all their own. Let's go to the kitchen and check it out. Here's how mushroom sauteing usually works. You heat a little bit of oil in your skillet, you throw in your mushrooms, and you start stirring. Then, all of a sudden, all the oil's gone. So you add a little bit more oil. You stir a little bit more, all of the oil disappears again. You add a little more oil because, frankly, you're not even sauteing at this point. You stir, the oil is gone. You add more oil, you stir. Once again, it's gone. It keeps disappearing to the point where you could have just deep fried these mushrooms. Why does this happen? Well, check out this experiment. I tossed 100 grams of halved button mushrooms with a quarter cup of vegetable oil. After five minutes, I strained them and weighed the mushrooms again. I also repeated the exact same steps with 100 grams of mushrooms that I first microwaved. The raw mushrooms absorbed 42 grams of oil. That's about three tablespoons. While the cooked ones, they absorbed two grams. That's right, just a half teaspoon of oil. That's a massive difference, and here's why it happens. The stems and caps of mushrooms are made up of a large network of fibers called hyphae that are 80 to 90% water. This tissue also contains tons of air pockets in which oil can collect. Cooking forces water and air out of the hyphae, but thanks to their chitinous cell walls, they don't break down. With no place for the oil to go, it simply stays on the surface of the mushrooms where it helps with browning. Okay, so it's time to cook, and I'm starting with a little over a pound of mushrooms. This is a mix of some of my favorite varieties, but seriously, grab whatever kind you want. And I'm gonna saute these mushrooms by adding water. Seriously, I'm adding a quarter cup of water to the skillet and popping everything over high heat. After five minutes, you can see that the mushrooms have collapsed and the skillet is dry like this. 
Then I just add a half teaspoon of oil and brown them up like this. We know these mushrooms aren't overcooked because we now know that's pretty hard to do, and they aren't loaded up with a quarter cup of vegetable oil, so that's great. And because I didn't need all that oil to cook them in, I can finish them with a little bit of butter for gloss and richness. I'm gonna go with just salt and pepper and plenty of both, but you can go as crazy as you want. Red wine, soy sauce, ginger, you name it. This is your new go-to technique for mushrooms. And this is how to eat mushrooms. Did you like that video? Well, let me know in the comments about your craziest experience with mushrooms. All right, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.